been on the research team for about a year and a half, I was excited to work on the second major galley report, which we developed with several individuals from Deloitte. So I wanted to um, just spend a few minutes introducing you to the topic and the methodology behind the research, and then Peter will walk us through some of the main findings. So I wanted to start with why we chose to look at acceleration in emerging markets. Over the past 10 years, accelerators have increased in number and geographic diversity, as acceleration is seen as an important way to spur entrepreneurship and therefore drive broader economic development in a region. The Accelerator Blueprint, or Standard Way of Accelerating Early Stage Ventures, displayed by prominent actors in the U.S. and other high-income countries, is often being used and replicated in emerging markets. And these programs, they do adapt to their economic environments, of course, but still the question is being asked, what role do these accelerators play in emerging markets, and are they having an impact on promising ventures? So we address this question by comparing acceleration outcomes in emerging markets to those in high-income countries, as well as addressing commonly held beliefs about the differences between the two geographies. This slide breaks down our research strategy, which had several phases. Moving from left to right, you'll see that we uh, use our venture performance data to identify performance contrasts among, among ventures in emerging markets versus high-income countries. We then recruited a diverse panel of experts representing various geographies and comprised mostly of practitioners, researchers, and funders, and asked them to brainstorm plausible reasons um, why, for why accelerators in emerging markets might perform differently than those working in high-income countries. We then pooled all of their reasons together and identified those that appeared the most frequently, uh, and we're able to organize those into a set of testable hypotheses, or as we call them, support beliefs. And we are basically testing assumptions about acceleration in emerging markets. And so from there, we uh, conducted structured interviews with various stakeholders, including entrepreneurs, accelerator program managers, and investors. We combined these qualitative insights with additional analyses of our quantitative data uh, to determine whether each of the expert panel's beliefs based on our sample had any validity. And lastly, to ensure that these observations were interpreted through an experienced practitioner lens, we presented them to leaders in the field and asked them what they might take away from this research, and then we finally uh, closed the report with their reflections, similar to what we're doing today on the webinar. This is a list of common beliefs that were pulled out of the expert panel. Uh, these are not necessarily beliefs that our experts held to be 100% true, but they were reasons that they thought were plausible and potentially explaining performance contrast between the two geographies. So here you'll see uh, the four buckets that these beliefs fell into, including differences in entrepreneurs themselves, such as whether they have greater talent gaps and less entrepreneurial experience, the ventures they start, uh, whether they need less capital or are more or less developed when applying to accelerators, the accelerator programs, are they lower quality, do they make fewer direct investments, and the ecosystem context which supports these efforts. Is there less overall support for entrepreneurship, including less investment capital available? So I'll hand this off to Peter now, who uh, will share about how we actually collect the venture level, uh, venture performance data, and how we use those observations to examine the impact of the accelerator programs. Right. Thank you so much, Abby, for that introduction. And uh, so before I, I go through and, and run through what I think the, the major observation from the report and some of its more nuanced findings, um, I just want to take you know, two things. I want to take people back to that, um, to that blended strategy and just you know, make sure that folks on the, on the webinar understand that this, this is a kind of an exciting project because it blends quantitative data that have been collected over time from participating accelerator programs but it also leverages the, the accumulating insights and expertise of the, of the folks that are, that are working in the field. Um, and those beliefs that emerge, sort of that, that collective mental map, um, I think is a, an important foundation for this report to think about how accelerator programs work with entrepreneurs and ventures embedded in ecosystems. So when we're looking for cause and effect relationships, we're really, really excited to be able to tease out um, the, various, the various potential effects. Um, so if you just go to the next slide, just for those that aren't familiar with the, uh, the Entrepreneurship Database Program, uh, we've been fortunate to be working with uh, the folks at Andy, with a, a number of funders, and with a number of accelerator programs around the world since 2013. 
uh, collecting prospective data from all of the entrepreneurs that apply to accelerator programs. And that, uh, that gives us a really interesting vista, not just on the folks that participated in programs, but also on the folks that were seeking acceleration but, uh, but didn't quite make it into the program. And that, that contrast between what happens over time to the accepted folks compared to what happens over time to the folks that sought acceleration but weren't accepted, I think is a, a very important first cut to, to look at the efficacy of accelerators. Um, and so that uh, the idea of picking them up at, at, uh, at founding, uh, sorry, at the time that they apply to programs and then revisiting the ventures about a year later um, gives us a chance to produce um, our first kind of major observation from this. So Abby, if you want to go to the next slide. Um, so what you're going to get over the next uh, two or three slides is a very, very quick overview, which hopefully uh, you know, serves as a bit of a teaser to you all, um, but also is an invitation to read a little deeper. There's some, some really neat things in the report that I think back up some of the stuff. Um, but folks at Andy, folks at Emory, folks around the pipe are, are really interested in this, this first slide about overall and on average, um, is there evidence that accelerator programs are accelerating outcomes like revenues earned, like full-time employee, and like you know, different forms of capital, equity, and debt. Um, and so this, this slide right where on the left-hand side is kind of this major table and, and in a very, I think, optimistic kind of way um, tells you that, yeah, on average, you're seeing good outcomes in high-income countries, but you're also seeing good outcomes, companion outcomes, and very comparable outcomes in the emerging market programs. Um, so in a weird way, the, the first thing that this analysis forced us to do is pause because a lot of people want to overplay um, kind of, you know, helicopter level differences between entrepreneurs and ventures and accelerators right, in emerging markets and says, you know, you know, they're, you know, they're qualitatively different. Um, and what this says, yeah, but there's going to be a lot of really important nuanced differences, but it's really important that we start with the premise or we erase the premise that there's something about ventures and entrepreneurs and programs in emer emerging markets that are somehow, quote unquote, more broken than they are elsewhere. Um, so I think that first observation that sort of shows promising average results uh, in and comparable results in both settings um, was you know, something that the research team you know, took as being very, very optimistic. Um, the data will evolve over time. These observations are based on 2,500 um, ventures that apply to 43 different programs. It's a good sample, um, but the sample is only going to get better over time. The one caveat that we'd like to kind of raise and that we bring up in the report is don't don't confuse the good things that happen in accelerators with some of the other things that need to happen before and perhaps even after accelerator programs. And so we, we raised this issue of, of parallel lines where we recognize that notwithstanding the fact that ventures and entrepreneurs seem equally promising uh, in the two different country types, um, emerging market ventures have a, an awful lot more difficulty you know, attracting equity to grow their businesses. And they experience these similar performances during their programs. Um, but if you look at the bottom right uh, you know, panel on this slide, what you end up seeing is what the accelerator programs are doing is they're basically kind of allowing the pre and post you know, differences to be roughly sustained. So we get good action you know, during accelerator programs. Um, but if you're not careful, that could mask the notion that says that you know, once left to fend for themselves, it is conceivable, right, that entrepreneurs that are working in, in emerging market settings, you know, will continue to have problems. So we just want to kind of raise that as a, an exciting observation about accelerator programs, um, but also kind of making sure that we understand there's still some issues we think, you know, in the broader ecosystem in terms of pr promising ventures getting support in emerging markets. Um, so if we transition then to the next slide. Um, so that's the sort of thing that if you just wanted a quick, you know, confidence boost, if you're kind of running accelerator programs um, in emerging markets, you, you get that with the first slide. Uh, but we, we were really excited, and I think the more interesting part of the, of, the, of the project was taking those collective beliefs of experts and kind of exposing them to scrutiny. Um, can we go back to the EDP data to get more information about pipelines and about ecosystems and about programs? Um, can we talk to um, entrepreneurs, program managers, investors, et cetera, to get more insights? Uh, so a, a, a strong invitation to folks to have a look at the, the different subsections of the report that speak to um, the type and quality of entrepreneurs and ventures um, that, that enter into accelerators or that apply to accelerator programs. Um, there's a belief that I think that we need to dispel that says that somehow these folks are different and perhaps inferior in, in emerging markets. Um, there was really very little that I made. 
Um, there's uh, really a little in our data that suggested that the quality of entrepreneurs or ventures um, were different enough um, to warrant any form of kind of different confidence on behalf of their prospects. Um, you know, we see entrepreneurs with similar credentials, similar education levels, prior entrepreneurial experience. Uh, we see ventures when they apply that have the same, if not more revenues, the same, if not more employees, um, a little bit older when they apply to accelerator programs uh, in emerging markets. So we think there's a kind of an underlying optimism about pipelines um, that folks should take away that says that, that, the, that there is genuine promise right, in the various emerging markets that are in our sample. And if you move to the next slide, um, do we uh, miss? Oh yeah, so the, the, but notwithstanding that, the one thing that we want to point out is if one of the important aspects of the ecosystems are that investment is being attracted to entrepreneurs and ventures in ways that are commensurate um, with their underlying potential, that at least at the front door of the programs, there seems to be um, a greater than necessary difficulty on the part of the emerging market ventures and entrepreneurs uh, to get that capital that they need to grow their ventures. Um, so we have this idea that says it's not like you can't build a business in emerging markets. It's like you know trying to find that that those, those investors and supporters that help you get you to and through inflections um, that are challenging, and that's the gap, obviously, that, you know, that accelerator programs are filling. Um, so we invite you to have a closer look uh, at some of the findings of, about ecosystems. And then the, the, the next slide. Um, obviously, then sitting in between the, the promising entrepreneur and the not broken but problematic ecosystems, that's the place where the, the accelerator programs kind of get to make their, their surgical investments. Um, we sensed going in that there was a fair bit of concern about the underlying quality um, of accelerator programs in emerging markets. We sensed that there were underlying concerns about the ability to put the, the tangible, intangible, and financial resources in place. Uh, but at least in the sample that we're, that we're playing with here, um, there was no reason to be any less optimistic or any less excited about what accelerator programs were doing. They were generating the outcomes that we saw before, um, and when you look a little bit closer in terms of the financial resources they're able to attract, the guaranteed investment they're able to attract, uh, the mentor pools they're able to attract, there's kind of a wonderful symmetry you know, between the two subsamples in the population that says that this, this particular construct, the accelerator construct, uh, I think is sort of equally promising in the two places. Um, and so if you, you know, take that again, that's, that's a, of running across the top, and I know it's real quick, um, but you know, we sort of end up with this idea just to repeat, um, if what one needs from data is ongoing or increased confidence that the quote unquote entrepreneurial fodder is in place to see good outcomes in, in emerging markets, I think the data so far suggests right, that there's no reason to be anything but enthusiastic. Um, there's uh, another kind of subset when you go back in and say, what's the most problematic element? It does relate to this matching entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial needs to um, financial slash investment and other needs. And accelerator programs we think are stepping up to the challenge and perhaps could do a little bit of a better job of kind of making sure that we understand what and where and how you know, the capital gaps are being manifested in the uh, in emerging markets so we can do a better job, not just kind of keeping those lines parallel through the accelerator experience, but also kind of thinking post-accelerators, the kind of things that we might do to make sure that some of that catch-up on the investment side you know, continues. And then the final thing is, um, is more of a kind of a reflection to ourselves. We're very excited about this particular report, and we're very excited about the, the evolution between the insights we were able to present off the Village Capital Study last year and the broader study this year, but everybody in the, 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 the study was very, very clear that, you know, if you try to just sort of stay at the level of trees and just call all emerging markets and all ventures and all emerging markets the same, um, if you stay at the forest, you're going to miss the trees. And so we're excited as we move forward to be able to continue to collect um, data that allow us to get closer and maybe go from emerging markets into Mexico and go from Mexico into regions across Mexico um, and start thinking about things like tech-based ventures and non-tech-based ventures so we can really start teasing out um, some of the things that, you know, that need to take place so we can take these promising observations about accelerators and emerging markets um, and, you know, continue to build on that promise so we're, we're doing more better work moving forward. Um, and so that, that sort of, the, in general, is where the research team, you know, steps away and we sort of, we, you know, we, 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 we pat ourselves on the back and say there's things for people to chew on, um, but 